After the Trinity test in 1945, the first detonation of a nuclear device, J. Robert Oppenheimer immediately realized the world would never be the same. Well, he was right. After the bombings of Nagasaki and Hiroshima, the world would spend the ensuing decade cowering in fear over the possibility of nuclear Armageddon posed by these new machines of death. These fears, however, didn't stop scientists from coming up with some pretty harebrained ideas for the atomic bomb. Learn about these bad ideas today on Cool Stuff, Strange Things. One idea proposed filling nuclear landmines with chickens. <laughs> During the Cold War, tensions were high in Germany. With Western economics fighting a tacit war against Soviet communism, the country was split down the middle. The capitalist allies supported the West, while East Germany was controlled by the heavily militarized USSR. Fearing the Reds would one day cross and invade Eastern Europe, British scientists designed a series of nuclear bombs to bury in East Germany. The bombs were christened Blue Peacocks and weighed 7 tons each. These plutonium-packed weapons yielded explosions equal to 10,000 tons of TNT. The bombs would be destructive enough and produce enough radioactive contamination to make East Germany uninhabitable for Russian forces or anyone else for that matter. Now, to keep winter temperatures from interfering with the bomb's electronics, chickens would be put inside with enough seed to last 10 days. This would keep the bombs warm during their eight day countdown. The average chicken was calculated to produce nearly 1000 BTUs of heat per hour, so they were the perfect solution. Though chicken wire became required to keep the chickens themselves from damaging the wiring. So there was chicken wire protecting wiring from chickens. By 1958, the project was scrapped over concerns the chickens could still accidentally damage the bombs and a general hesitance to irradiate half of Germany. So the chicken-filled nuclear landmines might not have worked out, but what if we found a more peaceful use for nuclear bombs? That was exactly the objectives of Operation Plowshare, to use nuclear bombs like dynamite for excavation and extreme landscaping. Operation Plowshare began in 1958. The project was pushed into formation as Egypt nationalized the Suez Canal. Political strategists wanted to know if it was feasible to build a second canal using nukes. This question kickstarted a whole movement, with scientists not asking if nuclear bombs were the best solution to a problem, but instead asking what problems could nuclear blasts solve. Excavation pretty quickly became the project's focus. The first experiment was dubbed Sedan. Scientists managed to create a giant crater in the Nevada desert. They displaced 12 million tons of earth, but the test site was incredibly radioactive. It took seven months before people could stand in the crater without protection. Seeing the Sedan crater as a success, however, the project scientists quickly formulated all sorts of civil engineering projects to make use of their new atomic shovel. One project hoped to use nuclear excavation to create an artificial harbor in Alaska. They planned to detonate 2.4 megatons of nuclear ordnance to create an inland pool of sufficient depth for ships, then connect it with a channel to the sea. Project Chariot, it would later become named, came incredibly close to being carried out. The higher-ups were so impressed with the plan that they identified 33 other sites around the world as candidates for bomb-made harbors. In 1962, however, the project was called off. The harbor faced massive opposition from nearby residents, and the military and economic value of the harbor's location was never adequately justified. Ever confident in the advancement of nuclear excavation technology, Plowshare's next idea was to bore canals between oceans and seas. The Panama Canal may have been a great feat, but Plowshare scientists proposed a sea-level canal, one that didn't require troublesome locks. They proposed a bigger, better Panama Canal, a channel to the Dead Sea for generating hydroelectric power, and even filling an enormous artificial lake in the middle of the Sahara. While some of the economic concerns of using nuclear devices for construction made sense on occasion, environmental impacts made almost every single proposal impossible. The operation did perform 27 nuclear tests on American soil and did help create a booming tourist industry in Las Vegas, but they never yielded results that made the technical challenge of harnessing fission for direct excavation practical. To this day, some test sites remain radioactive and many cause farm blights, entire towns to be relocated, and 
water contamination that persists to this day. As the Cold War thawed, diplomats became increasingly interested in denuclearization, and Plowshares' ambitions eventually became impossible due to treaty negotiations. While both of the previous plans have long been dismissed, the nuclear option for stopping hurricanes, however, comes up at least every year. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, they get hundreds of inquiries every single year asking why they don't just nuke a dangerous hurricane before it makes landfall. They basically explain that the force of the blast would have to cancel out the wind energy of the storm. Unfortunately, the amount of energy released by a fully developed hurricane is roughly equivalent to a 10 megaton bomb going off every 20 minutes. And that's measuring just the heat output alone. They go on to explain that the blast would disperse air in the storm, making the barometric pressure drop, but that would likely just make the storm stronger. Like Project Plowshare as well, the environmental effects are unknown, but weather experts have warned that the nuclear fallout could be carried straight onto land by a surviving storm. Now that you've been blown away by these stories of nuclear mishaps and bad ideas generally, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you never miss a strange and exciting video. For now, I'll see you next time on Cool Stuff, Strange Things.